I speak these words to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Albans. Good morning. I am so excited about today. <laughs> and I have to tell you, there's a lot going on, so you'll be excited to know the sermon is short. <laughs> I don't want to do a whole lot of housekeeping today in the pulpit, but I am excited to be able to publicly introduce and thank our interim music team, Joe Phillips and Avery Schott, where are you? There they are. And, and Jeff Heath have graciously and capably stepped up to accompany and direct our choirs throughout the interim period as we open a search for our new music director. We have a strong committee of 10 on our search. Our announcement is up on 10 websites, including the St. Albans website under music search. So if you know someone or know someone who knows someone, it would be great for us. Please send them a link to the announcement on our website. I just want to tell you, in relation to all of that, that I'm so grateful for this place and for their great faith and grace I see extended here on a daily basis. St. Albans, you are a bunch of really good people. And I am so fortunate to be here with you. I'm excited today for three other reasons. First, we have a baptism. Would you look at the cover of your bulletin for a second? <laughs> so, kind of a long week for me, but this was on the cover of the bulletin. Just warming my heart every time I looked at it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I saw that picture this week, Georgia, her adorable face. So, Emma, Emma Puritz, and uh, formerly Emma Hansen, and is the daughter of Virginia and Grant Hansen, and Georgia is their granddaughter. They don't live in Cape Elizabeth anymore, but the Hansons flew in from Oregon for this today. <laughs> and Emma and Joshua are here from New York City this morning, because St. Albans remains a holy place for them. You know, we never fully know or understand how or why God is working. We never know what impact might be made on a person who finds something holy here. The Hansons are here today as proof that this place can be a transformative place to belong. Second. I'm excited today that is, today is our dedication Sunday for our annual stewardship campaign. Uh, I'm going to say more about that during the announcements, but any of you who are tired of hearing about it, you should get excited too, right? It's almost over. All right. Third, I'm excited today because today is Christ the King Sunday. And I don't know, maybe it's something about the state of the world we live in right now. And the contentiousness and the fracturedness of our society. I don't know about you, but there are people with whom my relationships are damaged. We have been through an ordeal over the past several years. And I still feel it in my bones. And there's something inside of me that feels truly energized by a vision of the world ruled by love. Isn't that what we need? Isn't that the healing our society needs? Christ the King Sunday, uh, it might seem like something that we've always celebrated in the church. It might seem like one of those traditions that goes way back in time to the earliest days, but in fact it does not. Christ the King Sunday was proclaimed and declared in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. 
And it was done so as a direct rebuke to the fascism of Benito Mussolini. It was a call for Christians to remember that while we all have citizenships and nationalities, our highest calling is, and our final allegiance is to God. In a way, Christ the King Sunday reminds us that we are citizens. We have dual citizenship of whatever countries where we belong, but we have a dual citizenship in a kingdom that is still taking shape. That the loving army of God are gathering a new global humanity. You heard that reading from Revelation, right? Every tribe. And that humanity, that new humanity will move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit, following the example of Jesus, and resisting violence and fear and greed, as tempting as they are and meeting them with love and forgiveness and generosity. That's the world Christ is building. And we, don't, we not only wage this battle in the world, but, friends, we wage it within ourselves, within our hearts, on a daily basis, right? Our hearts are either God's or they aren't. And that's why we need the saving balm of our confession. The baptismal vow that I return to most often is that one that we will say together in just a little bit. It doesn't say, if you fall into sin. It says, when you fall into sin, will you repent and return to the Lord. And in that returning and in that forgiveness, we become a new type of people. A people set free from the burdens of guilt and shame. A people who need not be afraid of death or scarcity. A people of hope whose calling is to live now in the present moment according to a vision of an emerging kingdom. Christ is king. And we are called as individuals and as a community to live this kingdom into being. By the waters of baptism, we are revived, inspired, and initiated into the new humanity with which God is restoring the world. After Emma is baptized, she will receive a blessing with the chrism oil. And I want to highlight the origins of this symbol in our worship. It goes right back to the anointing of David as king of Israel. You've heard about it in the readings today. Every Christian baptism is a royal anointing. The chrism is a symbol that the baptized have been welcomed as citizens of the kingdom of Christ. And so it is most fitting that on Christ the King Sunday, not only do we celebrate the new life that is given in the waters of baptism, but for each of us of every age to take the opportunity to renew our own baptismal vows and to remember our own citizenship in the kingdom of God. So I want to plant a seed right now. If you're not baptized, but you want to be baptized, please let me know. Don't worry, there's no altar call. <laughs> but you don't have to be a baby to get baptized. No one in the Bible was. Jesus was 30 when he got baptized. I once saw a 92-year-old woman get baptized, and she was terrified. She, was, she thought she would be embarrassed. She had been her whole life, this whole way, never done it. She had been pretending, right? 
But I want to say there's nothing to be embarrassed about or afraid about. For there is a mysterious strength swirling in the waters of baptism that will take away your fear and replace it with love, forgiveness, and generosity. And so when I saw her get baptized, she was not afraid, and there was much rejoicing in me. So that seed is out there. Come talk to me. Our baptism into the citizenship of the kingdom of God is an invitation to abundant life. An invitation to love and forgiveness and generosity. Amen. Amen.